Hey guys, what's up? Bisectatron here from One Half Gazette, here with the War Looters Z recap video. And this was a close war, came down to the wire. Uh, if you haven't already, I highly recommend checking out the end of the war as shown in the last live on uh, War Day with One Half Genesis video, only like two videos back, because um, it was a fun end to the war, really intense. Came down to the final few attacks. Not the best war, but I talked about a lot of this already in the last video I made on it in the live on War Day video I just talked about, so uh, you can check that out if you want a little more details, but I'll go through it quickly one more time uh, just to get a few words on it in this recap video. Uh, it really came down to uh, trying to thin out the Town Hall 10 attacks as much as we could to get them spread out, because uh, the Town Hall 9s both clans really struggled with. Um, hats off to them because they did uh, st struggle with ours as well, but they were able to at least get them all 3 star uh, that did sacrifice a few three stars on what should have been probably in our bottom town hall tens, which was Lenny, me, maybe even Ginge, uh, but definitely our these these guys, me and Lenny, probably should have been three starred in a typical war. Uh, they did get the one on Pendragon though, which was a, a nice attack, and they left this one star, uh, which was just a product of them not having a whole lot of attack attacks left because they were spread so thin due to the, all the Town Hall 9s not being cleaned. But anyway, same story for us, kind of. We got the 11s 2 star. Um, we actually left a 1 star here because we had the attacks spread uh, so thin, like I said. But the difference was some of our guys stepped up big, uh, namely VF, like getting two 3 stars here. We looked at one in the live uh, video, but we'll take a look at the other one uh, in this recap. And then we actually did leave a, I think, yeah, one Town Hall 9 uh, two star. We had to do a few dips with our town hall tens to go down there and clean them up, but we still left one two star. Uh, but we did enough up top to get the the war one, and they had us on percentage, so we definitely needed to get that extra star, which we did. So good war to both sides. It was close. It was a fun finish. Uh, but anyway, let's take a look at a few. I want to show a town hall eleven attacking a town hall ten, which isn't always the best and most interesting, but. Uh, I want to give you guys a little more of this mass bowler, even if it is kind of a bully attack. But still, these aren't the easiest things to do, even if you're a Town Hall 11. And uh, this is a pretty solid base layout. He's using the mass bowler strategy, and uh, it's something I want to show a little more because it's becoming very popular. And if you can get it down, you have a good uh, advantage as far as, as a Town Hall 11 and a Town Hall 10, no matter what base you're attacking, because these bowlers are pretty powerful right now. Uh, you can see Vieth is dropping down a golem, a few bowlers behind the golem. He has to create the funnel first. Uh, that's that's a big part of it, creating the funnel, because these bowlers will walk on you. And uh, they don't have as much range as you might think. They can only throw over one tile, so they will go to the outside pretty easily. But anyway, comes in here with the queen walk. And the great thing about this is the healers will get on the bowlers pretty quickly. And uh, the healers get the effect of that rage often. So... When you have the Eternal Tome, also that helps. But but the main thing is the healers are raged and they're healing up those bowlers because they don't have a ton of hit points and they will go down eventually. And uh, typically you're not going to bring many heals for them. So having those raged healers keeps those bowlers up and they move through a base so quickly because you can bring so many of them. Uh, they're only six troop capacity and uh, or six housing space, whatever you want to call it. And I have to take a little bit of credit because I did say uh, that we'd see bowlers at Town Hall uh, 10 and Town Hall 11 becoming more popular after uh, they were moved down the 6 troop space after the update because a lot of people were like yeah they're still not going to be very relevant but I thought they'd be pretty powerful now I did say they would be used mainly for bowler walks this isn't isn't a bowler walk it's kind of a mass bowler attack but still I kind of thought they might you know be used for something at least uh, with this new addition it seems like they're pretty OP right now um, some people are even asking for a nerf I'm not sure about that but if they keep this up, I guess uh, we might have no choice but to ask for a nerf because they are really uh, running through some bases right now. And uh, we don't want to see Town Hall 10 or Town Hall 11 be ruined by this strategy. But anyway, uh, always a fun attack to watch nonetheless. Uh, we're taking a look at number 12 now, and this was another interesting attack. We're taking a look at a double zap quake. Uh, sorry about that. A double zap quake dragon uh, Golaloon. Just a lot of stuff here. Uh, taking out two air defenses with his spells, so a pretty solid trade if the rest of the base is set up nicely for you to get another air defense. Uh, you can see right here the dragons go down. Pretty easy funnel for the dragons. Just like two wizards and then they're straight on in. Luckily no black bombs to take out those dragons which could 
uh, potentially ruin the attack. But the dragons get the job done. Now he's coming in up top here with a golem. A few wall breakers to let the golem and the queen into the base. And just a few wizards to create the funnel. There goes the king. So kind of a very miniature kill squad going in. And uh, just the goal is to get that one air defense in the CC troops, I believe. And then uh, from there, he'll start the air part of the attack. Uh, but everything making its way through pops the king's ability. Uh, a golem comes out of the CC, which really doesn't matter. It might prevent the heroes from getting a little more value, but it's no threat to the air attack. And that level 4 Lava Hound comes out, which is pretty tanky. Uh, because you can bring that in your CC now at Town Hall 9, I think air attacks should be a little bit more common. And uh, even though Valks are still powerful, it's definitely something to think about if the base is laid out correctly uh, for the attack. And this base definitely is. So that one max Lava Hound did so much tanking, it's still at like two-thirds health. So, uh, great there. Uh, but the balloon's making their way through, taking out these defenses. There is that Tesla farm over there, but uh, the dragon's taking a little bit. A few balloons are making their way through, and both those Lava Hounds are still up. Uh, the great thing about this attack is he, even though he took out three air defenses, it was mainly with his spells. So he <clears throat> had, I think, like uh, two Lava Hounds, like 19 balloons. So still a very big air force uh, for, you know, not much left of a base without three air defenses and the queen. So got good trades at the beginning, overpowered the rest of the base. Awesome attack to Yaji, getting the three star. All right, um, base number 14 is the next one we're going to look at. Uh, 007 coming in and uh, doing it with some Valks. Just a very powerful, um, again, no jumps, no quakes. I've been seeing this more often lately is, you know, sacrificing a little bit of uh, knowing where your Valks are going to go just for that power that the spells can bring. If you can heal up your Valks, you know, three times during a raid, unless they really go weird on you, uh, there's a lot of different paths they can take that will still get you the three star. So keep that in mind. Uh, there's a lot of room for error when you have that much power uh, in your Valks and all the spells you can use on them. So anyway, it starts off with the Queen Walk. Just drops her down, a uh, pretty easy funnel. Gonna let her start moving. Not sure why he popped the ability there. I'm not sure if he would've needed it because those Teslas uh, were about to go down. I mean, they don't have a whole lot of hit points. The queen can take them out pretty easily. Uh, maybe would've needed it anyway, I'm not sure. I think he just wanted to start the Valks, so get the queen's ability out of the way and uh, let's go ahead and start the Valks. The king creates the funnel on one side. Uh, everything's moving its way in, has that rage. Probably didn't even need it because so many Valks, like 19 of them, or 20, and I don't even know, maybe the CC had some, but uh, they moved through so quickly already, I'm not sure the rage was needed, but not like he's really missing anything because he still has a ton of heals for them. Uh, that first heal goes down, and you can see they do end up going in a little bit of a weird direction here because uh, he knew that they wouldn't go into that builder's hut compartment, but I think he was hoping they'd head a little bit more north. Instead, they're kind of going south, but the thing is, like I said, if you have all these spells and all these Valks, uh, they can go in a lot of weird different paths and still get you the three star because right there they kind of group back up and now they're going to make their way back into the base, uh, reunite with the queen who's still working her way through and uh, get to the rest of this base because there's so many Valks still left up, still has the king and, and uh, two of those heal spells. There goes the first heal, uh, they'll get into that queen pretty quickly. His queen actually is still up, she looks like she might stay up because there's only that expo on her. Uh, drops that next heal for those few Valks in the town hall. Good decision there, keep those four or five alive uh, to do some more work in the base. So everything's kind of converging on this last spot. We'll go times two just to speed things up a little bit as these last few troops uh, take out these last few buildings. But anyway, it was a fun attack to watch. Good job to 007. And uh, I think it's a good strategy not bringing the jump to the quakes unless it's absolutely needed uh, to take out a part of the base, especially when you're bringing so many Valks because you can get such great value for those heals and rages that you can use on them. So anyway, nice attack. Uh, last one is 24, and a little more variety for you guys. Uh, this is Nate, and another uh, attack featuring some uh, suicide dragons, which is something that uh, we haven't seen as much of lately. I think I did put out a video a few weeks ago that there's like a resurgence of them. Kind of died down, but I started to see a little bit more. So here and there, we're seeing it. Also, I think miners could be something to take out the queen. I've seen some people do it in friendly battles, so uh, like a CC4 miners could potentially take out the queen if you deploy them right. Something to think about there. Maybe we'll see it in some attacks coming up in the next few wars. But anyway, uh, we have Nate taking on this base. I like the poison on the queen because so many, so often people don't use the poisons 
uh, you know, because you might use one on the CC troops and never get around to using the second one. But here he plans on putting the poison down and he does it. Uh, it gets those dragons some extra value because the queen doesn't take them out as easily. That one dragon is still at like full health. So it's going to get more value because the queen was affected by that poison. So good use of it there. Better than, you know, using a skeleton trap or something. Uh, so here comes the two golems. Uh, no Valks, which is something you don't see for like these kill squads. Just kind of an old-fashioned uh, two golem attack. I think it's uh, shattered that people call it two golems. Uh, coming in with some wizards behind it and then just the heroes making a pretty solid push into the base has the jump spell and then the hogs for the rest of the base so yeah kind of an old-fashioned attack but still effective if done correctly especially if you can keep those golems tanking out in front of the heroes which is something that's kind of a lost art but it's still necessary to do if you're going to not bring any valks and just kind of have your heroes be the main dps in the kill squad so it does a good job there you can see both these heroes are still pretty much at full health as they make their way through their base. So did a good job keeping those golems out in front. There goes the king's ability. He's gonna get pretty deep into this base. Uh, the queen's back behind him shooting with a few wizards. Uh, Hogs making their way through. That first heal goes down over that giant bomb. Still has two more uh, heals, which is something that's nice about uh, not bringing any Valks is because Valks are very spell demanding. They, they need heals, they need rages. Sometimes they even need jumps, but uh, a, a kind of a normal kill squad with the golems doesn't necessarily require as many spells, so uh, is able to bring more for the hogs. And uh, I like how he had these minions for the backside, because even if these hogs had gone down, there was only cannons on that very bottom part of the base, so it wouldn't have been any trouble anyway, because those minions could have cleaned up uh, while the cannons were defenseless because they can't shoot the minions. Uh, but the hogs got the job done anyway, which was even better, and they'll help with cleanup as the last few wizards make their way around. The queen shoots down these defenses. Awesome attack to Nate, getting the three star uh, with a shattered goho attack. Always fun to watch with those suicide dragons. Anyway, though, hope you guys enjoyed the recap. That's it for this one. Uh, good job to both clans. It was kind of an ugly war, but uh, they happen, and uh, doesn't mean it wasn't a fun one to be in. But hopefully, we'll uh, you know come away from this come away from this war and uh, be able to improve on our performance a little bit. And uh, next time you see an arranged war, maybe some more high level three stars if we can get that. Uh, so anyway, thanks for watching. Got an exciting war coming up uh, that we just got matched with right now. So stay tuned for that one. I'll see you guys later. Bye, Sectatron out.